Hey, what's up guys? Brian here, Brian's All Maintenance. Trust you guys are doing well. All right, hey, check it out. Just got done mowing grass for the day. Wanted to talk to you guys about a fun little topic and I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts on this one. Uh, we've been doing a, a, some of these videos here where I've been able to share some stuff that I wanted to talk about. I've been so busy playing catch up with cutting grass and uh, been out of town so much, but there's a lot of videos that you guys have been asking me questions on that I wanted to make sure that I covered. And this one's talking about boundary lines and property lines for customers. So uh, I got a couple like little juicy stories and examples for you. I know you guys like story time. We just hang out, have fun. It's not really complaining. It's just kind of venting and just sharing frustrations. And I know you guys really uh, can relate on a lot of these stories. So I want to hear your guys' thoughts by the end of this video. So make sure you guys leave a comment. But uh, a couple of you guys recently, similarly, have emailed me these kind of questions. And that's where I kind of get these ideas from. So if you guys have good questions, shoot me an email. Maybe we can do a video on them. Uh, but a few of you guys had uh, a couple customers uh, get angry at you guys lately about boundary lines and property lines and traveling on neighbors properties to get to your customers uh, backyards gated backyards and stuff like that and you know I have actually ran into those kind of scenarios and circumstances a few times as well in my career so I wanted to weigh in and give you guys my two cents on dealing with territory disputes with customers and boundary lines especially in subdivision uh, type homes and weigh in and give you guys my uh, two cents on how to uh, come at those situations and tackle that stuff so it's funny I just wrapped up our day here with Brandon a little bit ago dropped him off really quick and I'm back in one of the subdivisions I have to go uh, run around and do some extra work in and I actually have a customer in here who was one of those kind of examples where uh, the property line right down in the middle of the uh, side of his house he had wanted me recently to start cutting about four to five feet wider than what we were when we uh, started taking on the property about two months ago and uh, to conceal the guy's name let's just call this guy Tom right I love all of our characters names right but this guy Tom uh, he said hey look uh, my property line goes all the way over here you're only mowing it here I want you to start cutting another five feet. In fact, what he did was he took a can of spray paint and he spray paint, he tagged the sidewalk where he wanted me to cut up to. And so here's the whole deal though. The neighbor that's obviously next to him, and this is in a subdivision, mows all the way over the five feet back, like where I've been keeping this property line. And so I told the guy, Tom, I go, well, Tom, like, here's the deal. Um, I, I don't want to get in between your guys' territory war, your guys' boundary dispute, and all this kind of stuff. And uh, respectfully, this mowing line has been there for, for times past, let's just keep rolling with it. And uh, so in context, if some of you guys don't know, maybe you're new in business, what happens is that a lot of these folks in subdivisions, they get really, I don't know like the easiest way to say it, like the nicest way to say it, kind of petty, you know, about their property. I mean, we're talking about quarter acre lots and like, I, I'm a big picture kind of guy. I used to be really detailed, but I'm pretty big picture now. The older I get, the more I like kind of let things roll off, uh, water off a duck's back, right? And a lot of these people, though, they're vehemently um, uh, interested in keeping every square foot of property line, including, you know, that extra five feet of grass that the neighbor has been stealing all these years, right? So what happens is that typically somebody moves into a home, they buy a new home in the subdivision from the previous owner, and they always get something installed, right? Whether it's Comcast, cable, or, you know, some kind of uh, uh, invisible fence, right? Or they're making a new fence, they want a fence in the backyard, and the property lines get remeasured, and they get little, little flags little tax so they get a little property map and the customer the homeowner I should say realizes that their property line extends another five feet so they want that territory back or they realize like hey that guy's been cutting my grass all this time or usually what it is too is somebody finds the sprinkler line uh, and they find that they got to change sprinkler heads and they realize well that, my sprinklers are four feet into the neighbor's lawn well that's my property and um, so people get really really weird really really quickly what normally happens to guys like us and long hair guys and here's what my question is to you guys most of the time we get asked to start pushing those boundary lines back and I kind of made it a here's just my philosophy I kind of made it a hard line no I'm not going to steal that four feet back for you if the neighbor's been doing it for a long time but here's the the the, the situation we get put in the uh, dichotomy or whatever you want to call it of of these two scenarios is that if I don't go and get that five feet back for my customer um, they want to fire me if I push the five feet back over I'm probably not going to earn the business of the neighbor because the neighbor's gonna get all PO'd at me for taking five feet of his property line. And like, so one customer is gonna be mad at me if I do, one customer is gonna get mad at me if I don't. My goal is to not make either of them mad and just cut lawns and get to the next property and get done for the day. So, 
uh, let's let's take that a plus one. So here's the other scenario: is that when sometimes you have to skirt around somebody's landscaping bed, some of these subdivisions are literally like these homes are on top of each other, right? And I have a, uh, one of you guys specifically emailed me, and he said, and he shot me a photo of the the side back uh, the side yard, and he literally had to swoop around a landscape bed to get to the backyard of somebody's property, and that homeowner came out and literally chewed him out. It sounded like the kid that emailed me was a little bit younger, maybe 17 to 19. Obviously, he wasn't sure what to do, so he took the conservative route and just said fine we won't go on that back side but his question to me was well I can't get to the backyard any other way because the left side was you know landlocked or wood lined or whatever it was so I couldn't get around so what do you do and I said like hey you're gonna have to explain to your personal customer that he needs to talk to his neighbor to not go ballistic on you for riding over his property line to get to your backyard and in fact I have the exact same thing happen to me I have a property where I have to swoop out five feet six feet with as wide as the mower is right to hit that neighbor's backyard and uh, or to hit my customer's backyard and the neighbor always comes out and he always like stares me down his garage is always open you know he's always looking at you one of those deals and he always mows um, as soon as I start cutting the grass he always comes out to mow the neighbor's lawn because he doesn't want the lawn to be at different heights right as my customer that I'm cutting versus his lawn you know it's funny I think the whole moral of this whole video and story is don't live in a subdivision no I'm just kidding having fun but my wife and I like we want to buy a uh, build and buy property and like have two, three acres minimum because people have burned me out of subdivisions with the politics and the craziness and the hassles, right? Of all these people, how like they're just, they're they're crazy, man. They're, they're grown adults and they're arguing about four feet of real estate and it just, it's scary. And I tell my wife, I'm like, we can't, we can't live with the Joneses, man. Like I'll go crazy with people doing that kind of stuff to me because I'll burn people's houses down. No, I'm just kidding, having fun. But so that's my question to you guys. What side do you guys pick? Do you guys take the side of your customer and do you guys guys mow that extra four or five feet that the customer requests and keep your customers happy or do you tell them hey unfortunately we're just gonna mow the regular boundary line I understand your neighbors probably taken five feet of your grass but he's been doing it for ten years it's not my role to go over there and start a little turf war with you guys because that customer uh, the neighbor comes out and then you're the bad guy and you wanted to earn that guy's business or maybe you already maybe maybe you have both customers right and when you have both it's a little usually a little bit easier uh, but sometimes like he might be a, a landscaping customer and you do two thousand dollars worth of uh, work for him and you're only doing six hundred dollars worth of work work for your mowing guy and you don't want to make the other guy mad because he's a customer but you don't mow for him well wh which one do you pick so in the name of maybe giving you guys uh, just my conservative approach is don't get caught up in the turf war battle let these customers like kind of duke it out and figure it out and come to an agreement I never really try to regain that lost real estate for my customers unless the neighbor knows and they had a, a cordial conversation like to the new homeowner usually that's where these boundary disputes come from but Here's what I would say. If you have to swoop over to uh, the neighbor's property to get your customer's backyard, make sure that you have your customer talk to that neighbor if there is a turf war issue because, uh, I mean, you got to be realistic. Like when landlocked properties like that or something's going on on the other side of the house and you got to get back there, like you can't just take a trimmer back there or pick up a 21-inch push mower and take, that's just not realistic. So never get into a shouting match, a, uh, a, 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 a verbal battle or altercation with a neighbor. You always want to stay chill stay conservative don't yell at them if they yell at you back like even the guy that I was telling you who gives me a hard time I try to wave and do the friendly wave right you guys know what I'm talking about uh, but never try to start turf war battles or or try to take any more real estate back because you don't need people getting mad at you I guess is the moral of the story so anyway what do you guys do that's my uh, thought this is this is one of the thoughts that I had uh, I wanted to do a video ever since I picked up a new customer who tagged with a can of spray paint where he wants me to mow to and every time he uh, comes on out uh, at the end of the day at five o'clock when we happen to see him he always walks his property and checks the boundary line and the front part I do uh, to where he pointed like the front little boulevard but in the backyard you can see that I didn't take the other four feet of real estate back and sometimes he has me go back and do it and I tell him uh, Tom it's not happening I've told you this before I'm not getting caught up in between uh, both you and your neighbor you guys got to figure it out all right so anyway that's my fun little story uh, the boundaries and the territorial disputes don't get caught up in them but all things being said, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Do you guys take your customer side or do you guys play a neutral a little bit more like I do? Uh, leave me a comment down below. If you guys are new, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm all about helping you guys grow a more successful lawn care landscaping business. So check out these other videos here and we'll catch you guys on the next one.